Hi guys and welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. In today's video we'll be performing a no edge and bleed takeoff. Now to make this as realistic as possible we'll look at an operational example where for performance reasons we must perform a no edge and bleed departure. We'll discuss the procedure, push back and configure the aircraft accordingly and depart with no edge and bleed and then we'll carefully configure the aircraft back to normal operation as part of the after takeoff checklist. So without further ado let's jump on board. So here we are in the Zebo mod, and you might be asking the question, why on earth would we ever depart with the edge and bleeds disconnected? Well, it's all to do with performance. With the edge and bleeds off, there's no demand from the packs, and the edges can produce more thrust, allowing us to lift more weight. Now, if we have a look at the air conditioning and pressurization panel, with the bleeds currently disconnected, uh, you can see how archaic in design it is. Uh, you must really carefully configure this panel accordingly. Now, we'll be looking at the before taxi no edge of bleed checklist, ensuring that the APU is providing the pressurization to the left pack and set the panel in the correct order safely. Uh, we'll then depart because we'll need to have the edge of bleeds off for performance reasons today with the bleeds disconnected, and then we'll carefully reconfigure the panel for the rest of this flight, uh, which is around six hours today. So we're fully loaded uh, for this departure. So now let's have a look at the performance and make sure that we're all legal and safe to go. So here we are in the United Kingdom in Bristol Airport. You can see it's where amazing journeys start. And as I just mentioned, we have a six hour flight today. That's because we're going all the way to the island of Sal in Cape Verde. Uh, we have pretty much a full tank of fuel, 18.4 tonnes, and our zero fuel weight is 58.6 tonnes. That's be, that means our takeoff weight today is uh, 77 tonnes. Now we need to look at the performance to see if we can actually configure the aircraft to take that weight uh, all the way to uh, Cape Verde. So now let's have a look at the uh, FMC and our flight plan to see if we can get things all set and ready. So if we go firstly to index at the performance, you can see I've got all the weight in there. 58.6 tons zero fuel weight, uh, fuels 18.4, our gross weight is uh, 77 tons. Now here's the Boeing onboard performance tool, I've set it based on the weather conditions outside which is a standard ISA, so we've got calm winds, temperature of 15 degrees, QNH is 1013, and this is exactly how we'd leave it at my operator for most departures, uh, optimum thrust setting, flat 5, uh, air conditioning auto, that's for the engine bleeds on at the moment, and anti-ice is off. And you can see here the regulated takeoff weight, the maximum we can lift at the moment, is 72,718 kilos. Well, that's absolutely no use to us. Our current uh, gross weight is 77 tons, or about uh, 4 tons short there. So let's play with some of the configuration to see if we can uh, improve things. Now, before we try the engine bleeds off, we'll try a different flap setting. So you can see now I've selected flap 25. That's actually increased our regulated takeoff weight by about 2.7 tons. We can now lift 75,386 kilos. That's because Bristol is field length limited. Usually a higher flap setting would actually reduce your regulated takeoff weight due to obstacles. Uh, so that's still not good enough. Yes, we've increased the amount we can lift, but we're still a little bit short of what we need to do. Uh, if you'd actually like to learn more about uh, how different flap settings affect departure, I've got a useful tutorial on that uh, which I'll link in the uh, video description below uh, when I was in the PMDG NGX in my heyday. Now let's have a look at the bleeds off to see again if we can improve our performance. Well hey presto you can see I've selected the engine bleed off and we can now uh, lift uh, 77,103 kilos. Our takeoff weight is going to be 77,000 kilos. It's pretty tight but it's safe, it's legal. Uh, you might find that we'll be using all the runway here out of Bristol. So if we go to the N1 limit page you can see I've already selected 15 degrees. We have the N1 of 99.1 which is just within 0.1% of what the OPT says. And for flap 25 I've matched the V speed that we have in the OPT which is 135 knots, uh, 140 knots and 147. A slight discrepancy probably down to two things, one the zero mod and two the fact that we uh, are quite performance limited the V speeds do change and uh, often don't match the FMC in these sort of situations due to other factors associated with the uh, length of the runway. Right, so all the information's loaded into the FMC. We know that we're going to depart with flap 25 with the edge of bleed disconnected safely. I'll get the APU started, the aircraft pushback, and you can meet me just prior to taxi where we'll configure the aircraft for the no engine bleed departure.
Alright ladies and gentlemen, the pushback is complete, we've got two engine starts and we've now configured the aircraft for the before taxi no engine blue checklist. Now my operator, we really carefully configure the aircraft during this one. The uh, first officer actually reads this checklist and then the captain actions it and repeats the response so it's not a, there's no flow involved with this. So we're now going to configure the aircraft accordingly. So the first thing we do is, as per normal, put the generators on but we leave the APU running. That's because that will be providing the pressurization to the left pack. Start switches to continuous, probe heat comes on, engine anti-ice is required. We cannot use wing anti-ice with the engine bleed disconnected. Now this is where it gets really important. The right packs uh, comes to auto, although it won't be used. Uh, we then close the isolation valve. The left pack switch goes to auto. The, we then disconnect the engine bleed. Uh, APU bleed is providing pressurization to the left pack. And then we disconnect the right engine bleed. And that is the uh, configuration for the no engine bleed takeoff. We then configure, uh, continue the flow uh, as per normal. We then configure the flap switch today. If you remember, it's flap 25. So... Uh, 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 25. Perform the flight control check. So that's forward, back, left, centre, right, centre. And then, of course, the rudders, full right, centre, full left, centre. Push the recall. Uh, blank the lower DU. And that's it. That's the before taxi no engine bleed checklist complete with the aircraft configured with the bleeds uh, engine bleed disconnected we'll now uh, taxi to the hold point and uh, just prior for departure we'll complete the before takeoff checklist So here we are at the hold point for runway 27 in Bristol. We can just complete the before takeoff checklist. So the configuration warning horn I checked. Flaps we have 25 required, selected in green light. The stab trim is set for departure. We then perform the takeoff briefing. Again, verifying that the pressurization panel is set for the no engine bleed. So we've got the packs in auto, bleeds are off. The V-speeds are set for departure, 135, 140, 147, uh, which is set here on the MCP. From Bristol today, runway 27, departing on the Exmoor 1 x 3 climbing on runway heading 268 degrees until we're 5.2D off India Bravo Tango Sierra, or uh, 4.5 DME off India Bravo Oscar November. We'll then make a left turn, 224, heading to Somot. And then we'll intercept the 245 QDR from the Bristol NDB to Exmoor, stopping that climb at 6,000 feet, which is set for departure, highlighting again that we need to complete the after takeoff, no engine bleed checklist for departure. Right, so we'll imagine we've uh, now got our clearance and then we'll line up on uh, runway 27. So here we are lining up and it's really important uh, that you don't follow that uh, yellow taxi line when lining up because we are very much field length limited. Uh, we don't want to use up any more of our lineup allowance than we need to. So we're going to do this kind of sharp turn here using all of that runway uh, for our departure here. And then we'll uh, get ourselves lined up and you'll see it should be pretty tight as we are field length limited. I think that's looking okay for the On runway 2, 7. And again, RAS just confirming that we're on the correct runway. There we are, slightly off the centre line. I'll let myself off and uh, let's uh, see if the performances work correctly. I don't usually have this sort of uh, scepticism, but uh, it is a desktop simulator. Uh, you never know that uh, we might actually end up <laughs> end up uh, rolling off the end of the runway. But we'll see what happens. There's 40%. That's stabilised. Let's push Toga. Uh, which is here and set takeoff thrust, release the parking brake and let's see how we get on. So 99.1 There we are, takeoff thrust set indications are normal, light forward pressure on the control column. Any nuts. That's checked, release the forward pressure. Is 
approaching V1, the point at which we can stop still. V1. Committed v1. to take off. Rotate. Let us rotate two to two and a half degrees per second, and all of that runway's been used. Oh, look Pause at that. Rate. Pause the rate of climb, gear up. That just shows you how accurate the Zebo mod is and how uh, good X Plane 11 is. That's exactly what I expect with this performance today. And there's L. Right, so approaching a thousand feet here, we can engage the autopilot, there's command eight, and we can bug up, and we need to retract from flap 25 today. Now we're already above the flap 25 bug of V2 plus 15, so we can select flap 15. Uh, there's the 15 bug, so we can select flap five. There's the five bug, we can select flap one. And as the aircraft smoothly accelerates to the flap one bugging it we can then select flaps up there we are and flap selected up okay the flaps are up no lights we'll just select vertical speed because we want to slow things right down to perform the after takeoff no engine bleed checklist we're climbing to the QNH which is 6,000 feet we'll also accelerate to 250 knots and now we can complete the after takeoff no engine bleed checklist now this must be done in the correct order because you might end up back pressuring the APU so the first thing we're going to do is turn the engine number two bleed air switch on APU bleed air switch off and uh, now in the real aircraft you often get a little uh, cabin altitude pressure bump here we wait for that to stabilize that hasn't happened here in the Zebo mod we'll then select the engine number one bleed air switch on isolation uh, valve switch to auto and now we can shut the APU off and then the rest of the checklist is uh, as per usual so we firstly put the uh, check the air conditioning pressurization verifying that we've got it correctly configured for the rest of the flight that looks good and it's set the start switches we can now move to off gear can go to up and off order brake to off and then we just confirm if we need to have standard set which we don't because we climbed to 6,000 feet on the x one x-ray and that's it that's the after takeoff no engine bleed checklist complete all right guys that's the end of the after takeoff no engine bleed checklist tutorial i hope you found that interesting and learned something new don't forget to like and subscribe and if you want to stay up to date with the latest flight deck to sim content don't forget to push the bell icon as well uh, fly safe and I'll see you on another live stream very soon. Bye bye for now.